The unemployment rate is calculated by taking a random survey of 60,000 households nationwide. To start, the population is divided into three groups. Group 1 consists of those under age 16 or institutionalized. In this country, if you're under 16, you're expected to be in school. If you're in an institution, such as a nursing home or prison, you obviously cannot present yourself to the labor market. Group 2 consists of those not in the labor force. Examples of individuals who are not in the labor force are full-time college students who are not working and stay-at-home parents and retirees. Group 3 consists of those age 16 and over who are willing and able to work and actively seeking work. So Group 3 is the labor force. The labor force is simply described as those who are either employed or unemployed. To be counted as unemployed, you must be part of the labor force. This figure shows the labor force, employment, and unemployment in 2009. The unemployment rate is defined as the percentage of the labor force that is not employed and is found by taking the number of those unemployed and dividing that number by the labor force. Remember to multiply the results by 100 so you can express this as a percentage. The Bureau of Labor Statistics rounds the number to one decimal point. You'll often hear the unemployment rate quoted by political pundits as an indicator for the country's economic well-being. However, the unemployment rate isn't a perfect indicator. Two factors cause the official unemployment rate to understate actual unemployment. Part-time workers are counted as employed, even if they want full-time work. If a person is laid off from a job where they made $100,000 a year and are now working 20 hours a week making $15,000 a year, the unemployment rate does not include them even though they now live below the poverty level. Discouraged workers are those who want a job but are not actively seeking one because the difficult economic period has caused them to give up. Therefore, these individuals are not counted as being in the labor force, so they are not part of the unemployment statistic. If they are not seeking work, they are officially in Group 2 as described in the preceding slide. It's important to note that there are actually three types of unemployment, and two of these are naturally occurring even during an economic expansionary period. The first is frictional unemployment and is regarded as somewhat desirable because it indicates that there is mobility as people change and seek jobs. Frictional unemployment is usually a short-term type of unemployment. A common example might be the period of time it takes a recent college graduate to find a job. Structural unemployment occurs when certain skills become obsolete or geographic distribution of jobs change. This is often a result of changing technology and can be a long-term type of unemployment. An example would be the need for an assembly line worker having to go back to school because their job is now performed by a robot. Although it can be a hardship on the individual, it is all part of the innovation that pushes economic expansion. The type many workers fear is cyclical unemployment. Cyclical unemployment is caused by the recessionary phase of the business cycle. As firms respond to insufficient demand for their goods and services, output and employment are reduced and workers are unexpectedly laid off. Extreme unemployment during the Great Depression, which reached 25% in 1933, is an example of cyclical unemployment. It is sometimes not clear which type describes a person's unemployment circumstances, but cyclical unemployment can be estimated by using the natural rate of unemployment. The U.S. government always aims for full employment. Full employment does not mean zero unemployment, but instead that there is no cyclical unemployment. The full employment unemployment rate is equal to the total frictional and structural unemployment because these types of unemployment are always occurring and are a natural part of our economy. The full employment rate of unemployment is also referred to as the natural rate of unemployment and is often cited as being between 4 and 6 percent. The natural rate is achieved when labor markets are in balance. The number of job seekers equals the number of job vacancies. The natural rate of unemployment is not fixed but depends on the demographic makeup of the labor force and the laws and customs of the nation. So what is the economic cost of unemployment? The GDP gap is the difference between potential and actual GDP where potential GDP reflects the level of GDP associated with the natural rate of unemployment. 
Economist Arthur Oaken quantified the relationship between unemployment and GDP as follows. For every 1% of unemployment above the natural rate, a negative GDP gap of about 2% occurs. For example, if the unemployment rate is 10% and the natural rate of unemployment is determined to be 4%, then cyclical unemployment must equal 6%. Therefore, that economy will experience a negative GDP gap of 12%. This is known as Oaken's Law. This means that the country is producing below what could potentially be produced. Given our resources and level of technology, you might liken this to operating inside of the production possibilities curve. This figure shows the actual and potential real GDP and the unemployment rate from 1989 to 2009. The difference between actual and potential GDP is the GDP gap. A negative GDP gap measures the output the economy sacrifices when actual GDP falls short of potential GDP. A positive GDP gap indicates that actual GDP is above potential GDP. A high unemployment rate means a large GDP gap, and a low unemployment rate means a small or even positive GDP gap. Another important consideration is that unequal burdens of unemployment exist. Rates are lower for white-collar workers, and teenagers have the highest unemployment rates. African Americans have higher unemployment rates than whites, and rates for males and females are comparable, though females currently have a lower unemployment rate. Less educated workers, on average, have higher unemployment rates than workers with more education. The long term, which is 15 weeks or more, unemployment rate is much lower than the overall rate, although it has increased from 1.5% in 2007 to 4.7% in 2009. The global perspective shows the unemployment rates in five industrialized nations from 1999 to 2009. Compared with Italy, France, and Germany, the United States, with the exception of the Great Recession, has enjoyed a relatively low unemployment rate. 